Welcome back to the channel. Today we're diving deep into one of the most crucial topics in modern AI in search systems, vector indexing. If you've ever wondered how ChatGPT searches through millions of documents in milliseconds, or how Spotify finds songs similar to what you're listening to, you're about to find out. By the end of this video, you'll understand exactly how HNSW, IVF, PQ, and other indexing methods work, when to use each one, and see them in action with real code examples. Let's get started. Imagine you have a database with 10 million high-dimensional vectors, maybe embeddings from a language model. A user asks a question, and you need to find the most similar documents. The naive approach? Compare your query vector to every single one of those 10 million vectors. That's potentially billions of calculations for just one search. Even with modern hardware, this could take seconds or minutes. In production systems serving thousands of users, this simply doesn't scale. This is where vector indexing comes in. Instead of checking every single vector, we pre-organize our data into smart data structures that let us find approximate nearest neighbors in logarithmic or sublinear time. The key insight? We're willing to trade a little bit of accuracy for massive speed improvements. This trade-off between speed, memory, and accuracy is at the heart of every indexing strategy we'll explore today. Before we dive into specific algorithms, let's establish our core concepts. First, ANN, Approximate Nearest Neighbors. Unlike exact search, ANN accepts that we might not find the absolute best matches, but we'll find very good matches very quickly. We measure this with recall. What percentage of the true nearest neighbors did we actually find? A recall of 95% means we found 95 out of 100 of the actual closest vectors. Every index type we'll discuss represents a different point in the speed, memory, accuracy trade-off space. Some prioritize speed, others minimize memory usage, and some maximize accuracy. The art is choosing the right balance for your use case. Let's start with IVF, Inverted File Index, Think of this like organizing a massive library. Instead of searching through every book, you first decide which section to look in, then search within that section. IVF works by clustering your vectors into groups using k-means. Let's say we have 1 million vectors and create 1,000 clusters. Each cluster contains roughly 1,000 vectors. When you search, IVF first finds the closest cluster centroids to your query, then only searches within those clusters. By setting n probe equals 10, we're saying check the 10 most promising clusters instead of all 1,000. IVF shines with large data sets where you can afford some memory overhead for the cluster information. It's particularly good for generic search applications where you need a balance of speed and accuracy. Now let's talk about product quantization the compression champion. Imagine you need to store billions of vectors but have limited memory. PQ solves this by smartly compressing your vectors. Here's how it works. Take a 128 dimensional vector and split it into, say, eight subvectors of 16 dimensions each. For each subvector, PQ learns a codebook of 256 possible values. Instead of storing the full 512 byte vector, we store eight codes, one for each subvector. That's just eight bytes per vector. We've achieved 64x compression. The magic happens during search. PQ pre computes distances between query subvectors and all codebook entries, then combines these to estimate full vector distances. It's not perfectly accurate, but it's incredibly fast and memory efficient. PQ is perfect for edge devices, mobile apps, or any scenario where memory is more precious than perfect accuracy. You can store millions of vectors in just a few megabytes. Now for the star of the show, HNSW, 
or hierarchical navigable small worlds. This is arguably the most popular index type today, and for good reason. Think of it like a highway system for vectors. HNSW builds a multi-layer graph where each vector is a node. The bottom layer contains all vectors with local connections. Upper layers contain fewer vectors, but with long distance connections, like highways that let you skip across the country quickly. When searching, HNSW starts at the top layer and falls down through layers, getting closer to the target at each level. It's like taking a highway to get close to your destination, then local roads for the final approach. The beauty of HNSW is its tunability. Parameter M controls how connected the graph is. Higher M means better recall, but more memory. EF controls the search beam width. Higher EF means better recall, but slower search. HNSW consistently delivers excellent performance across different dataset sizes and dimensions. It's the go-to choice for production semantic search, recommendation systems, and most modern vector databases. Before we move on, let's quickly cover a few other important index types you might encounter. LSH, locality sensitive hashing, uses hash functions that put similar vectors into the same buckets. It's probabilistic and works well for binary or very high dimensional data. Tree-based methods like ANOI build binary trees by recursively splitting the vector space. Each leaf contains a small set of vectors. They're deterministic and work well when you can afford the build time. Choose LSH for very high dimensions or binary data. Annoy when you need deterministic results. And scan when you want Google level optimization out of the box. Here's where it gets really interesting. You can combine these methods. IVFPQ is probably the most common hybrid approach. IVFPQ gives you the best of both worlds, the speed of clustering with the memory efficiency of quantization. It's perfect for massive datasets where both speed and memory matter. Other combinations include HNSW plus PQ for graph navigation with compression, or multi-index approaches that use different indexes for different query types. Let's put everything together with our comparison table. Each index type occupies a different sweet spot in the speed, memory, accuracy triangle. Flat indexing gives perfect accuracy, but is slowest. IVF offers fast search for large datasets. PQ is your memory champion for huge datasets. HNSW provides the best overall balance. It's fast, accurate, and scales well. IVF-PQ combines clustering with compression from massive memory-constrained deployments. Use FLAT for research and benchmarking. IVF for general production search. PQ for edge devices or mobile apps. HNSW for most production systems. IVF-PQ when you need to handle billions of vectors efficiently. So how do you choose? Start with these questions. How many vectors do you have? What's your memory budget? Do you need sub-millisecond response times? Can you tolerate some accuracy loss? My recommendation, start with HNSW for most use cases. If memory becomes an issue, try IVFPQ. Always benchmark with your actual data and query patterns. The best index depends entirely on your specific speed, memory, and accuracy requirements. Let's recap. Vector indexing solves the fundamental problem of finding similar vectors quickly in high dimensional spaces. IVF clusters your data, PQ compresses it, HNSW builds navigable graphs, and hybrid approaches combine the best of multiple worlds. Key takeaways. There's no one size fits all solution. Understand your trade-offs. HNSW is a great starting point. Always benchmark with real data. And remember, the best index is the one that meets your specific speed, memory, and accuracy requirements. If this video helped you understand vector indexing, smash that like button and subscribe for more deep dives into AI infrastructure. Drop a comment with your vector indexing war stories. I'd love to hear about your experiences. Until then, happy vector searching.